Our bodies are the site of oppression so much of the time. So maybe it really isn't sex that the church has so much trouble with, but the body, skin color, gender, variance, sexual orientation, differences in ability, body type and shape, all of these things are the territory of oppression. What we also call culture is very related to bodies, how we celebrate them, ritualize them, segregate them, and express ourselves through them. And it's often about differences in bodies, as if there were a hierarchy of preferred bodies, and any deviation must be controlled or in some way diminished. The creator of the universe actually seems to delight in multiplicity. In fact, we are learning more recently we may be living in a multiverse, not a universe. God revels in variety, and therefore in differences, is appreciation and delight in difference one way we can imitate the creator? What if church or religion actually embraced the idea of appreciating difference? Much of the Bible that Christians use is actually body friendly in that the creator pronounced creation, including bodies, good. It seems like, though, ever since then, religion and church have been demonizing the body. In the early church, in the New Testament, the church was called the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, images laden with physical and sexual imagery. But it is as if the church has forgotten that and bought into a theology that denigrates the body and seeks to only limit and control sexuality. As long as the church, Christianity, and often other religions as well, are a project of colonialism, are the handmaiden of values that despise difference, that create the other, we have a right to be suspicious of organized religion. After all, what is colonialism, if not the colonizing of bodies and whole communities of bodies? Over the last 40 years or so, there has emerged a whole body of feminist and queer and liberation theology in Christian and other contexts that has sought to correct the anti-body tendencies of the church. And that's 40 years as against almost 2,000 years. So we have a lot of time to, uh, to really rethink this. <clears throat> and I want to share a few ideas about reframing our theology of body and sexuality. And after I do that, I'm going to go on to a case study and really talk about the issue of abortion in the context of how we view body. Many psychologists and theologians are talking not so much about the self anymore or the body, but body selves. One word, body selves, that unify our bodies, minds, and hearts as one. I cannot separate my body from my mind or my heart. Everything is connected, is all part of one reality. Feminist theologian Sally McFaig said that the earth is God's body in a way that unifies creator and creation, in which God is embodied not only in human life, but all of creation. What if we treated all of creation with the honor we say we want to give God? What if humans did not see ourselves as specially privileged, but rather as a part of all of creation? And as we think about sexual ethics, can we think of it not in terms of certain sex acts, performed in certain contexts that are morally sanctioned, but can we think of sexuality in terms of our highest human values? Can our sexual ethics revolve around values such as mutuality, respect and self-respect, justice, love, honesty, commitment to healthy practices? And can we understand human sexuality as not limited to procreation, um, but understand that human sexuality has many different meanings and purposes uh, in human life. And all of those meanings can be good, <laughs> uh, and all of them are important. I wrote a book years ago called Our Tribe, Queer Folk, God, Jesus, and the Bible. 
In that book, I explored the idea that human sexuality at its best is really bodily hospitality. In many ways, our bodies are our homes. We are a body self. And sexuality is a good gift from a creator who knew that human sexuality would not only be about hormones and procreation, but about relationship, intimacy, and connection. To invite or to welcome sexual connection, whether it's romantic, playful, or both, is to offer bodily hospitality. To invite someone into my body, my body space, quite literally, is a profound human experience, even in the most casual of circumstances. It involves risks at many levels and offers an opportunity to know and be known. This is one of the experiences of being human about which the church is profoundly inarticulate today, something that must be changed if Christianity or any religion is to be relevant to 21st century life. What would it mean for the church in the wider institutional sense to focus on sexuality not as a problem, not as something to be afraid of, controlled, or monitored, but to be explored and celebrated as bodily hospitality, as a place where justice and love and peace can be experienced and embraced as a good gift from a good God?